What is up my two stroke junkies? Let's get to working on this four stroke. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna be getting the Project YZ450F part three in a second here. You can see I have the bike sitting behind me just like it was before. I haven't really gotten around to doing much to it. I just wanted to make a quick mention. The uh, progress on the YouTube channel has been slowing down significantly only because of a few life events that have been going on. I actually got a major accident for those of you guys that follow the channel. And uh, I've been dealing with the insurance company and trying to battle for the best check that I could possibly get from them, which just came through. And I just picked up a car, which was another thing that takes some time and I have that sitting behind me and I actually just added 40 years to my age because I bought a Buick you guys can check that out right here oh yeah look at that beauty got the nice missing headlight going on actually this headlight was filled with water there was like literally enough water in it to fill up like a solo cup and the uh, the ballast was filled with water it was totally shot but this is actually a pretty cool car I think anyway it's got 19 inch wheels on it. It's a Regal CXL. It's got a two liter turbo. And actually what's really cool about this is it's a stick, which is hard to come by in a Buick. But I think that's a pretty cool feature, you know? So it was a pretty inexpensive car. And I usually find stuff that needs some work. So I've been a little bit occupied trying to get this thing roadworthy, some water in the trunk some uh, stupid stuff like that, but you know. But yes, so amongst the accident and trying to get this Buick roadworthy and some other things, some of you guys know I also started a new job pretty recently and uh, it's just been a little bit tough trying to balance everything out, but I will get it guys and I'll be getting back to my regular one to two videos posting a week. But all that shit aside, let's get into um, something a little bit more important, something that I'm planning on doing with Stupid Fast John. We're talking about having an event where you know a lot of you guys have been sending in dms and stuff saying that you want to ride with us or that you want to do like a meet and greet something like that but a group ride we had such a big response on uh john's channel when he mentioned this for a group ride there would just be too many people and uh you know things would get out of hand so what we're thinking now is like a bike show quad and dirt bike show and uh basically like we're trying to rent out a big field everybody brings their quads and dirt bikes and we want to have a like a drag strip where you guys can do call outs and you can even race john and i because I know a lot of you guys are dying to do that. And uh, for those of you that follow Instagram, you're probably already aware of this. Uh, but yeah, so that's something we're planning on doing. It would most likely be in about two months. And it would be in the, we're in, we're in like near Philly in the Poconos, John and I. So it's going to be somewhere in that region. And, uh, you know, we, basically what I'm asking for is let me know in the comment section below. Send me some DMs on Instagram. Let me know who would be coming and if that's something that you guys would actually be interested in because this is going to be a lot of commitment and time on my and John's part. It's a, you know, we're planning on, you know, setting up something where hopefully a couple hundred people would come and it would be a really nice event. So let me know in the comment section below if that's something that you guys would be interested in. If there's anything different, you know, like you don't want to do a bike show, you want to do something else, let me know so that we can plan for that and we'll get something together here pretty soon. Okay, so back to the task at hand. Project YZ450F, if you guys remember in the last video, put this big gun exhaust on, which is very big. And we also painted the, wheel, the wheels, put these little Excel logos back on here. Got the front ones too. Plus we got our bolts unstuck in the fork guards. And we did that little method with the tank, had the infamous spinning tank um, nut cert, so we took care of that. So if you guys haven't seen that, oh, plus we uh, cleaned up the chain. But if you guys haven't seen that video, definitely check it out. Now, being as I've been a little bit strapped for time, we're gonna do a simple video today, and we're gonna clean up the controls a little bit. So I got some new grips and some cheapy Chinese CNC levers that I actually think are pretty good. And I've also been staring at this thing for quite a while and the subframe is starting to bother me. A lot of you guys are giving me crap saying, eh, the subframe's bent, that bike's a piece of junk. Well, you can get a used subframe that's straight for like 50 bucks shipped. So I'm just gonna go ahead and order one and hold off on putting the plastics on because you know what? You're right, it is bent. And right now it might not look that bad, but you can see right there, really. 
But when I get the plastics on there, that's when you really notice that. And that's just kind of a lousy look. So for 50 bucks, we'll swap that out. So you can see these grips are pretty clapped out. You know, we got rips in them. The grip is like really worn in here. And you know, got the grip donuts on there. That's always a good thing. And then this one over here was probably super whooped. And my buddy just replaced it out with another Scott grip. But look at this thing, man. Time for new grips, you know? Maybe I can get this boot too. Got some rips in that. And then as far as the levers, there's nothing wrong with these. But the uh, the CNC ones that are like the fake ASV unbreakables, I think they look really nice. Kind of gives the bike a little bit of a, you know, more modern, sleek look, a little bit of customization. And then we got the Pro Taper bar pad already. I'm not sure if these fat bars came stock in 09 or not, but I'm going to leave that on there. That's going to go really nice with the yellow color scheme, and it's just a good look. Okay, guys, a little bit of a different setup here today because we actually have some sunlight out today. Usually it's pretty late by the time I get started filming, but we got to keep it somewhat professional, right? Can't make this whole thing a vlog style video, but I know you guys have been asking for more vlog style videos. Anyways, all right, let's get to opening up these parts in the interest of saving time. All right, so really simple stuff here. We'll just get cracking right now and open these things up. Boom! Some half waffles. So these are Pro Taper half waffles. I believe they are soft. I actually wanted medium compound. I don't know if I ordered the wrong ones or they sent the wrong ones. Who knows? But soft compound is good. You know, it's, it's really not bad. They just wear out pretty quickly. But they're good grips anyway. That is my favorite brand of grip, by the way. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, shape, or form. I've just used a lot of grips, and the Pro Taper half waffles tend to be my favorite. You know, they feel really good. And then... In this bag, we got some cheapy Chinese parts. Ooh, there's even a logo on these. So these are the cheapy eBay unbreakable levers. And I've run these on several bikes, and they're actually pretty reliable, I think. I don't know if I'd say they're unbreakable, but you know, it's kind of hard to screw up a CNC lever. So these were 24 bucks shipped. These were 12 bucks shipped. So for really cheap, we're going to clean up the handlebars. When I used to buy and resell quads and dirt bikes, that was like mandatory. Whenever you're buying a new bike, you know, if you've ever gone and looked at a bike, when it's got crappy grips and stuff, you know, it's like uh, bald tires on a car when you're going to look at one. It just, I don't know, especially with something that you're gripping with your hand. When you have new grips and nice levers and everything's set up nice, it just feels right. And it's, you know, I feel like no bike is complete without grips and handlebar and, uh, Hand, like nice levers and it's so cheap to do even if you get premium quality stuff i mean if you get asv you're looking at probably you know like 150 200 depending on which ones you get but i think it's worth it in the end and uh yeah so we're gonna try to get these things on before the sun goes down we have like 20 minutes of sunlight left so we're gonna play a little game beat the clock and uh we're probably gonna lose all right so let's hop right into it we'll start out with the easy one here and we'll do our brake lever and first We'll pull off our rubber boot. And we're just gonna use basic hand tools here, guys. Just a regular old 10 millimeter wrench. All right, now we'll get this new lever in. Hopefully it fits. Uh-oh. Oh no. I think this is slightly bigger than stock. So let's see here. Got 11.85 on the stock one. Oh, 12.35 millimeters. So it is bigger, but it looks like they're the same lever it should work so this is easy enough to fix i'm just gonna either sand or file that down a little bit and then hit it with the buffer to make it nice and smooth so that we have a nice smooth action Ugh, our game of beat the clock is not looking good guys but anyways we're gonna use this little sanding disc here got this thing at harbor freight for like ten dollars and uh you guys were asking where it came from because i used it in the shift star video for the banshee 
and apparently it is not available anymore. They have things similar on Amazon and uh, eBay, and I think the cheapest one I could find was like 55 bucks. I'm pretty sure this was, I think this was 20 bucks, which was a bargain, and I love this thing. But anyways, let's take a little bit off each side, and we'll get it down to the stock width. All right, let's see where we're at here. Well, 11.75. So stock was 11.85. So it should fit. Let's check it out. There we go. No problem. So I did shoot a little bit of white lithium on here just to keep things lubed up. Feels pretty good. A little bit torn whether or not I want to run this boot, but for now we'll keep it on there. All right, now we'll come over to our clutch side. Hopefully this one doesn't need to be filed down. All right, I've had it with the hand tools. We're racing daylight here. Got to take this hot start off to get to our bolt here. This one's really gritty. It's got to be wiped out. All right, got a little bit of white lithium grease on this one as well. Let's see if this one fits without modification. Oh yeah, that one fits nice. And I did clean up our bolt as well so that we'd have a nice smooth action. Feels good. All right guys, so the levers are on, but it's starting to get dark here. So we're gonna move inside. We did not win our game against time and daylight beat us out again. All right, we are inside where it's safe from the elements because it's dangerous outside. So what we're gonna do is take off these grips and I'm gonna try the compressed air method, which if you guys have ever tried that before, you basically take comp a compressed air nozzle and uh, you try to lift up the graphics and shoot the air underneath the grips and that should you know, dislodge the glue. Although I don't think it's gonna work quite as well with these grips because they're ripped. So the air might you know, come through and escape out of here. I've even had grips like balloon up. It's pretty crazy. So we'll try that. If it doesn't work, we'll just cut them off or try to rip them off or something, but we'll get them off. I think it's actually working. That was easy. See the grip expanding, it is working. <laughs> oh, come on, doing everything 
I can to not cut these off. Can't lose. Already lost the time today. All right, now I'll clean these up a little bit. All right, so these are all clean, nice and dry. And we're actually gonna be using some Scott's Grip Stick. Some uh, grip glue, which I've never actually used before. I've always done the spray paint method where you shoot some spray paint, clear spray paint, it really doesn't matter if it's clear or not. I just like to use clear, so if it drips or gets on the bars. But anyways, you shoot some uh, spray paint in the grip, a little bit on the bars, and that acts as a lubricant. But just slide the grip right on, and then it, it's very, very, very nice and tight. Good bond. I've never had any trouble with that. But I figure I'll use this grip glue since uh, it came with a set of grips, and uh, I want to try it out. So it says to clean off the surface, put the grip glue on your bars, not on the inside of the grip. And then you slide it on and allow six hours for it to dry. So let's give it a shot here. Not really sure how much to apply, but I don't want my grips slipping, so just get them out. Spread it on. This stuff smells like uh, bottle glue. See if we can slip this on. It seems to have worked. And I got it about where I like it. I like to put it on the end too because I feel like that's a spot that usually starts to spin really quickly. Now the only thing left to do is adjust these levers because they do have an adjustment. If you can see that under there. But I'm not going to do that until I have the seat on and I'm actually sitting on the bike because that's really when you have an idea of, you know, how you're going to be sitting and where your hands are going to be sitting and, you know, how to make it so that it's the most comfortable. So for now, I'm going to leave it like that. All right. So they're on there. I can't really like full bore grip them and see what they feel like because I just put that grip glue on there. We want to let that dry. But I have to say the grips are, or the, uh, the levers are really ergonomic. I like them a lot. I've had other CNC ones that kind of had sharp edges. These ones are a little bit smoother. They finished them, I guess, or they just, it's a, from a different company. I'm not really sure, but they feel really nice. That with the, uh, the soft grips and it's a good feel. It's definitely a lot better than the way it felt before. Okay, guys, so I know this wasn't a crazy video, but nevertheless, it is definitely important to put new grips and comfortable levers on a bike. You know, your controls are, you know, that gives you the most feedback of the bike, and I think it's really important to have everything nice and comfortable. And like I said before, it's cheap and it's easy, and it makes the bike look fresh. Now, in the next video, we'll probably be putting the new subframe on and cleaning out the carburetor and throwing some new jets in there because we did put that slip-on muffler on there, so that's probably going to require at least a little bit of jetting. And then beyond that, we'll be putting the plastics on and the graphics, and that's what I'm really excited for. And also, I have a cheapy Chinese seat cover that I'm going to be testing the waters with because it was really cheap. It was like 13 bucks, but it was actually the only option I could find that came in the color that I wanted unless I wanted to spend like $120 on a seat cover, which I didn't want to in this case. So I figured I'd give it a shot for 13 bucks shipped. So I'll be testing that out. We'll do an installation video coming up soon and you know, get the, uh, the feel and the quality of it and we'll see if it holds up. And as always guys, remember to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, that does help me out a lot. Also remember to check me out on Instagram, it's michaelsabo350. And don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let John and I know if you'd be interested in coming to our quad and bike show. You can also hop over to my Instagram, shoot me a DM, or make a comment on my most recent post. Those are the easiest for me to see. We're creeping up on 20,000 subscribers, guys, which is absolutely insane. I remember it took almost six months to get my first 100 subscribers. And for you original 100 that are still here, thank you so much for all your support. 
But I just want to thank everybody for taking the time out of their day to actually watch my videos. If it wasn't for you guys watching my videos, this channel, there'd be no point. You know, I couldn't do all this stuff that I love doing. So really from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank you to everyone. I do try to read all of the comments that you guys send in. I know I can't respond to all of them, but I do read them. A lot of you guys are making my day like every single day saying the nicest stuff. And it really means so much to me, guys. So I just want to say thank you so much. And enough of the sappy bullshit. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great weekend.